Okay, so the first rock we have here is going to be a granite. A few things about uh, the granite first. Uh, granite is a plutonic igneous rock. That's right, the crystals are larger relatively to an intrusive igneous rock. And because it was able to cool slower because it cooled below the surface and not above the surface. So let's take a look at this rock here. Okay, so three main minerals in this rock are going to be your quartz, your plagioclase feldspar, and your hornblende. Now, let's go ahead and examine what those three different minerals really are. So you can see pretty much from this view, you can see black minerals, you can see milky white, I would describe them, and maybe this like medium gray mineral flowing around here. And so, let me zoom in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and go through the minerals here. The first mineral I'm going to do is blue plagioclase feldspar. That's going to be our milky white mineral right here, about right here, right here, right here. Next a mineral is going to be our quartz, which is going to be that lighter gray, kind of in between. It can get it can get confusing between the plagioclase feldspar and the quartz, so be careful. And then the last mineral is going to be our hornblende, the black mineral. Notice the elongations. That's a telltale sign of a good hornblende crystal right there. All this black stuff all over is all going to be hornblende. Flip it over. You got another good one right here and there. So if you get a nice light shining on this rock, you should be able to move it and see your cleavage flashes of your black and your white mineral, but not your quartz because it has conchoidal fractures, so you won't get the cleavage flashes like you would from the other minerals. So you can definitely see the black ones happening. Let's get a good plagioclase flash. So you see right here, and right here. And if you really want to try hard enough, you could probably find a cleavage flash for every piece of white plagioclase on here. Right here. And again, the quartz gets pretty shiny, almost like a sugary reflection. Or maybe something like ice, but it doesn't flash back at you like the other two minerals would. That was a good big one right here. Okay, and that's pretty much it for our granite. Let's move on. Second rock we have now is going to be our fossiliferous limestone. A couple of things about this rock before we start it. Limestone is formed in warmer shallow seas, or in intermediate, or you could say distal, locations offshore. <coughs> It's due to the accumulation of microscopic features like coccolithophores, which are made out of calcium carbonate, which is the same composition as not only the shells here, which are probably made out of aragonite, but the interstitial material we're going to call micrite. And so this is actually a really cool rock. Let me zoom in for you. And if you look at the interstitial material, or the micrite here, you can see that <coughs> it, might, it kind of looks maybe like a, like a shale, maybe like a really fine weak sandstone perhaps but um one trick we're going to have is we're going to use <coughs> three molar hco put one little drop on and the carbon and the calcium carbonate is going to react with the hydrochloric acid and you'll get a reaction a fancy word for that is effervescence and then it's always good practice to wipe it off. So I'm going to take this and clean it off real fast. Okay, and that's about it for fossiliferous limestone. Hope you enjoyed the video.